This is a stone fly nymph. In Scotland and the River Clyde we call it the gadger. It's a big bug. So on this one I've got a Skalka G hook size 8. And to save a bit of time I've done a just a tiny bit of prep on it. I've put a couple of feelers on which you put on before you put the bead on. And then I've put the bead on. Now I'm going to do these in another video but by adding some thick solar edge UV resin you can make it into a uh, very stone fly looking you can actually buy these beads but uh, this is just me using up my old countersunk beads that I don't like the colour of so for the tail we're going to put in um, a couple of brown goose by it so get your get your uh, hook to the right angle, bring your thread down, cut your waist off, get your two goose biots, line them up with the tips, if possible they'll natural, it's not so vital on this pattern because the hook's quite thick and it actually splays them anyway but if you can get them to they naturally face out the way so if you can get them side by side and then bring them in line bring them down get your length you're happy with hold it tight couple of loose loose, loose wraps because this hook's so thick, it wouldn't do this with a, a smaller hook, but because the hook's quite thick, it's actually keeping them either side of the shank, so it's actually splaying them quite well there. Cut the waist off. And now what we're going to do, it's quite a chunky body on this fly. So what we're going to do is... You couldn't build the body up with uni stretch, eh, sorry, with nano silk. So we use uni stretch and white. So get my uni stretch. Now you want to start this about two thirds of the way up the body, where you're going to start your legs. Just get it tied on, cut your waist off. Now, when you're taking it to the back to give yourself a better taper, if you wind the thread away from you, it'll flatten it out. So you can then bring it right up to your goose biots and it'll hardly have any build up, and then you can taper it away from there. And then let it kind of cord back up again to build up your body at the back. And then when you come back in towards the tail, Spin it away for yourself again. Now flatten it out. So you're still putting the wraps in, but without the bulk. Yeah, that's creating a nice taper there. And then we'll just run it up, run it back down. That'll do it. You don't want it too thick. And we'll tie that off there. So bring your whip finish tool in. Right, so again, position your vise, uh, your hook in the vise, bring it round so that it's a better angle. Always try and get your uh, vise into as good an angle as you can possibly get it. Yeah, sorry, we should have, should have moved on to white. You don't need to do this, but it's just so you don't, because it's a translucent nymph skin, you don't want to see it through it if you can help sorry my hands are all greasy tonight I've been using quite a lot of UV resin 
again as ever with the virtual nim skin cut it at a slight 45 degree angle angle facing up, up away from you tie in your tip stretch it back and then position your vise hook the vise back up bring your thread up to your tying off point first turn tight bring it round your goose bias make sure it's nice and neat second turn still tight Take up your 45 degree angle, third turn you're into the full width of the numb skin and then from then on you're just half, keep your segments nice and neat, half and half, loosen it off a wee bit and that'll fatten the body up, still keep my half and half to your tie off point, that's the back of your body done. Keep your nano silk nice and tight. That's not going anywhere. One, two. Up. And your scalpel. Cut that off. Now that bit that's left, we can use that for our thorax cover. No, it's maybe a wee bit small. So you just want to cut, for the thorax cover, you just want to cover it, cut a wee V. It's a tying in point. Not too um, deep. You just want, a, as long as you've got a wee point on it, just enough to catch your thread in. See there. So again, we'll bring the hook up a bit, make the tying in angle better. Right, change over to our brown now. Get your V, just catch it on top, and then bring your nano silk back to the start of where your legs are going to be. Check it's lying square because you're going to pull that over like that. And now we can start to put in the legs. Now we've got six legs to put in. Two sets, three sets of goose bites. I'll try and do them two at a time. Finding it quite hard to work around the camera. Next week, just get them same as you did with your tails. Get this out of the road. Put one down either side. Get your length. One, two, two loose turns. See how they're sitting. And if you just pull, it flares them out. Cut off your waist. Don't cut them too close. Or you could pull them out. Must admit, once the silks one. Wait till I get this. Look at this. Thorax. Right. 
far too long. Oh, just getting on the road. Right. Um, nice tight rope. Dumbing rope here. This is just to give yourself a body, thorax, separate the legs. Remember when you're dubbing, always go the one way. Bring your thread forward. To where your next legs are going to go in. Get another two goose bites. Sorry, I had all these cut and I seem to have lost a couple. Oh, I've just seen them. Right. Get these lined up again. Line them up. Just doing them one, I'll just do them one at a time. Just get it in position, pull it down, pull it in the length. And do your other side. Sometimes you get goose spikes, sometimes they're a lovely shape, and other times they're quite. I like them and they're quite chunky. These two that I just put in there are quite skinny. Right. On this side, I just don't know what I've done with my fingers tonight. I really, really greasy. Cut your waist off. Get some more dubbing.
had all this nicely prepared and I lost two I've lost two of my goose bites unfortunately. Right, last two legs. Get on the side. Pull on. Over the other side. Same again. Right, tie them off. Get our waist off. Get your head straightened up. A couple of wraps of thread to secure everything. In. I'll touch a dubbing. Pull that in the back there and bring your thorax cover over. A couple of turns, just make sure it's sitting square on the top. Again, with the uh, nano silk, don't pull too quite tightly, or you can actually cut it. And your scalpel. Trim your waist off. Pull it up. Give that a wee trim at the end. Now what you want to do is get your brown sharpie. Colour in your thorax cover. This is dried out for some reason. Must have been lying without the lid on. I don't think I've got another brown. Oh, I have. Oh, it must have been sitting in the light. I never noticed. Colour and your thorax cover, and then again, this is optional. 
run your sharpie down the back to give you the two tone effect if you run it from back to front it doesn't fill the segments in I don't know if you can see that gives you a lovely effect so you've got the two, the clear clear underneath nice and brown with the segments, two tails the head, the, the countersunk bead with the UV resin to make the eyes and your pheasant tail up front for your feelers and then if you just get your um, back of your nail if I can manage to do this the right way It'll not be like that when it's in the water anyway. Just give them a wee bit of curl. And then to finish off, just and secure the bead, etc. Just come in with your UV resin. Give the back a coat. Just seals the pen in, gives it that nice shine. A wee bit in the back of the bead, just to give it that wee bit extra shine. You always get a wee bit of dubbing kicking about. And then just come in with your torch. So that's as our Stonefly Nymph Clyde style. Gadja. Hope you enjoyed that. Thanks for watching.